Welcome to the St. Michael Fall podcast series. My name is Mary Lessman, and I'll be leading our meditation today. Our theme this fall is Building Our Future. This is a unique time in the history of St. Michael Church. God is calling us to take courageous steps forward. Together, we will build a future where the kingdom of God can be seen and known in new ways. As the psalmist says, send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. A reading from the book of Ezra, chapter 6, verses 1 to 22. Then King Darius made a decree, and they searched the archives where the documents were stored in Babylon. But it was at Batana, the capital in the province of Medea, that a scroll was found on which this was written. A record. In the first year of his reign, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where sacrifices are offered and burnt offerings are brought. Its height shall be 60 cubits and its width 60 cubits, with three courses of hewn stones and one course of timber. Let the cost be paid from the royal treasury. Moreover, let the gold and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, be restored and brought back to the temple in Jerusalem, each to its place. You shall put them in the house of God. Now you, Tatanai, governor of the province beyond the river, Shethar Bozani, and you, their associates, the envoys in the province beyond the river, keep away. Let the work on this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you shall do for these elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of this house of God. The cost is to be paid by these people in full and without delay from the royal revenue, the tribute of the province beyond the river. Whatever is needed, young bulls, rams, or sheep for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, or oil, as the priests in Jerusalem require, let that be given to them day by day without fail, so that they may offer pleasing sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his children. Furthermore, I decree that if anyone alters this edict, a beam shall be pulled out of the house of the perpetrator, and then they shall be impaled on it. The house shall be made a dunghill. May the God who has established his name there overthrow any king or people that shall put forth a hand to alter this or to destroy this house of God in Jerusalem. I, Darius, make a decree. Let it be done with all diligence. Then according to the word sent by King Darius, Tatnai, the governor of the province beyond the river, Shethar Bozani and their associates did with all diligence what King Darius had ordered. So the elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, son of Iddo. They finished their building by command of the God of Israel and by decree of Cyrus, Darius, and King Artaxerxes of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. The people of Israel the priest and the Levites, and the rest of the returned exiles celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. They offered at the dedication of this house of God 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Then they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. On the fourteenth day of the first month, the returned exiles kept the Passover. For both the priest and the Levites had purified themselves. All of them were clean. So they killed the Passover lamb for all the returned exiles, for their fellow priests, and for themselves. It was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile, and also by all who had joined them and separated themselves from the pollutions of the nations of the land to worship the Lord the God of Israel. With joy, they celebrated the festival of unleavened bread seven days, for the Lord had made them joyful and had turned the heart of the king of Assyria to them so that he aided them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. Here ends the reading. 
If we had to boil down the long activity of God's relationship with His people revealed in Scripture to one word, that word would be salvation. Again and again, no matter how much we test and disrespect Him, when push comes to shove, God saves. He saved His chosen family, Jacob and his sons, by relocating them to Egypt so they would survive the seven-year famine. When Egypt became a place of servitude for His people, God intervened to save them out of slavery and bring them to a new land. When Israel was defeated by Babylon and had spent a generation in exile there, God changed the hearts of the now Persian rulers such that they released the exiles and sent them home to their land and to their God. And of course, the culmination of God's salvation is our reconciliation once for all through Christ's obedient sacrifice on the cross. Our story for today from the book of Ezra is one of those salvation stories. In 538 BCE, under Persian King Cyrus, the Jews were released from exile and sent back to their homeland to rebuild the temple of God. But the Jews ran into obstacles and opposition to this charge. Just as we experience in similar circumstances today, there were those who didn't want the temple rebuilt. Local leaders were worried about the diminishment of their own power and they didn't want anything that might make the Jews more powerful. So the project progressed in fits and starts until Tatanai, the Persian governor of the area, asked for a ruling. He wants King Darius to check the Jews' claim of Persian support against the official record, hoping this will put an end to the Jewish building project once and for all. Digging through the archives, Darius finds Cyrus' original decree Contrary to those who would keep the Jews from building their temple to God, Darius upholds the original decree, mandates financial support for the project, and even stipulates that any who try and interfere will be impaled on a beam from their own home as punishment. With the interference decks cleared, Israel is able to complete the building of the second temple. It's completed in 516 BCE, and its completion is commemorated with a community-wide Passover celebration and rededication. For God's people, this story has a happy ending. Here at St. Michael, we too are embarking on a big and exciting building project. We can draw inspiration from this wonderful story from our history. From the beginning of God's relationship with His people, we have been stirred moved, compelled to create spaces set apart to be with and honor God. Whether it's laying rocks at sites where we encountered Him, or carrying around the tent of meeting for years in the desert, or building the temple as a central space set aside to worship God and build community. We know that we can encounter God anywhere in creation. Hiking a mountain, in a child's laughter, or our teary eyes and stirred hearts when we observe the deep generosity and kindness of others. But God promises to be particularly present to His people in worship. In a time when there are fewer and fewer spaces that foster the building of community, St. Michael is choosing to create exactly this. There are so many things we can choose to invest our resources in. Homes, travel, bling, How satisfying and fulfilling to choose to invest in the present and future of God's people. That we might take our place in the history of God's people by creating beautiful spaces dedicated to God, to the spreading of His message of love for the world, and the nurturing of the generations to come. We've already been gifted our happy ending in our salvation through Jesus Christ. Now. It's our opportunity to create happy endings for those who will come to know God in this place for generations to come. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity. And that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.